Welcome everyone back to Weekly Rover Updates, and this evening we'll be having a look at the latest mid-range models for the potential of some quite spring-like conditions next week. We'll also have a look at the precipitation charts as we still have a couple more days of colder temperatures to get through until, this, until we could be seeing some milder temperatures next week. Uh, remember, if you do enjoy my videos, make sure you do like and subscribe as it does really help me out. Now, we're currently looking at the GFS run. You can see the high pressure that's been giving us our cold um, is si sitting to our northeast, still bringing some southeasterly winds into eastern areas, and it's bringing them some very dry and cold air, at least on the surface. So, for the next couple of days, while those isobars tighten as the low pressure um, pushes in, in front of the weather fronts, where there's still cold air in place, it's still going to feel bone chillingly cold with quite a significant wind chill, with dew points getting down to negative double digits, and temperatures still around freezing or just below freezing uh, until about Sunday when temperatures do start to rise quite widely. So if we run through the current GFS, you can see that high pressure does start to slip away and we start to have an influence of sort of a southwesterly flow. Now, it's not going to be very mild, especially on sort of Sunday, Monday, as there's still a lot of cold air on the surface. It'll be quite windy. So even though the temperatures will be milder, it won't be snowing at least, it will be rain around, it will feel, uh, it will feel generally around average. Beyond that, we do have a push of south to southwesterly wind, so we are continually pulling up milder temperatures towards the middle of that week and next week. But you can see on this GFS run, we never really get up those quite mild warmish temperatures that are towards Spain we do start to uh, bring more of a flat westerly which is no mean cold but it's not really going to be settled and dry and, and, and warm um, in the in a February sunshine but you do see as we head towards the next Saturday high pressure does try and build in and you see we are building up some quite warm southerly winds um, we could be seeing you know highs of uh, low double digits, potentially getting to maybe 13, 14 degrees if this exact run came off, especially in the southeast where we have, uh, we're more towards the centre of low pressure, we're not likely to have any weather fronts, etc. Beyond that, we do maintain those southerly winds, and that higher pressure does maintain its strength, so we have a good couple of days, potentially, of some quite warm conditions. And you see the 10 degree isotherm gets through, which is very warm uh, at the end of February, and uh, that could be providing mid-teens. Again, this GFS one probably is towards the more extreme end of the ensembles, but it just shows you, um, on one hand, if this high pressure was a bit further northwards, we could be pulling in cold, easterly winds um, with some bitterly cold air sitting in Scandinavia and towards Siberia, um, whereas if the low pressure is further southwards and we are pulling up those southerly winds from Spain, it can be quite warm, in fact. It just shows you how very small differences in the position of the high pressure um, can provide wildly different weather patterns. Now again, it's not guaranteed this sort of pattern is going to come off. It definitely does look like it will be more high pressure dominated come in 10 days time, um, but it really does depend on the orientation of that higher pressure, as again, if only subtle changes could be starting bringing in quite a cold easterly or northeasterly flow. Beyond that, high pressure does stay around, and we do start to put in a bit of an easterly flow. Now, initially, it's not particularly cold, as the continent has been uh, has been warmed up a little bit by, uh, by by that milder air, but it will still be cool um, coming off the uh, coming off the near continent, which is still reasonably cold in February, and we're not getting those balmy southerly winds from Spain. You do see some very cold air sitting to the east of Europe and heading towards the southeastern part of Europe as the high pressure sits away. And it just shows you, again, if that high pressure moved just slightly more towards Iceland, we could be plunged into the freezer. And if I run through the, uh, the temperatures towards the end, generally very high pressure dominated and generally quite spring-like as well on this GFS run. Again, still a lot of a lot of change in these milder and drier temperatures don't come in until about seven or day, ten days' time and, it, and, it, and with uh, northern blocking, it's always quite volatile within the models. If we now have a look at the GM run, which unfortunately looks like it hasn't updated this evening, so I don't think we'll be looking at that uh, in the longer term, but we'll go out to 90 hours. And you can see high pressure again, very similar pattern. Um, and by next Tuesday, we are pulling up south to southwesterly winds. Again, generally quite mild temperatures. Um, but it probably won't feel all too mild under the, the wind and rain, but it will, will be a, quite a marked contrast from this week. So it probably will actually feel generally mild, even though uh, normally this wouldn't feel, uh, feel too mild if we hadn't had such a cold spell beforehand. 
If we now have a look at the ECMWF, you can see again very similar pattern to the other two models. And as we head towards 120 hours, see low pressure is quite dominant before high pressure to build out into Europe. And we do pull up those far fetched southerly winds. And we do see quite mild and warmer temperatures pushing up. Again, it's difficult to say exactly uh, what the surface temperatures will be, as it does depend on the exact wind direction. If it's coming off the North Sea, it's likely to be a bit cooler. If it's coming directly southwards, or uh, from the near continent, again, probably likely to be a little bit warmer um, and really does depend on what happens um, leading up to that. And if we have a look at the temperature deviation, you can see very warm upper air temperatures are over the top of the UK. But again, since some people point this out, that this could be a, a, a preemptive to um, warm air advection where high pressure pumps warm air towards the Arctic. Um, and as you can see with the upper air temperatures, this quite mild air is getting towards Iceland and towards Greenland. And if it does do that, it does encourage higher pressure builds in the northern latitudes, which then could deliver cold temperatures. So even though it might go very warm or mild, uh, at least this time of year, uh, for a period of time, it could actually encourage colder temperatures coming in for the end of February and the start of March. So that's really one to watch um, if we do see this these very strong southerly winds that which could pump warm air up into the North Pole. Now, if we have a look at the upper airs and precipitation, you can see it's very cold at the moment, for, especially in London, and then it goes to average to just above average. Again, it will feel still reasonably cool next week, and we'll look at the two meter temperatures in a minute, before it drops to around average again by the 18th. We only start to see that rise to much milder, and perhaps, perhaps warmer temperatures. That doesn't actually, it does actually look like the GFS wasn't that much of an outlier with those upper airs. Very interesting to see that. It's around 20th to 22nd where we see those very mild upper airs. Again, it really depends on the wind direction, sort of the dew points with that as well, to decide whether that's going to be very very warm, potentially getting up to mid-teens, or whether it's going to be a little bit cooler um, with nighttime frosts. And you can see towards the longer run, longer longer extent of the GFS ensembles, you do see to start to see some very cold outliers coming in, which potentially is a consequence of that uh, warm air advection. If you ever look at the two meters and precipitation, you can see again, uh, start with precipitation. Precipitation is reasonably high um, starting from Monday, Tuesday for a good three, four, five days as lower pressure comes in, the, in off the Atlantic. And then we start to see those rise in temperatures again around seven, eight, nine degrees next week with lows around five or six. So generally around to probably a little bit above average, but it probably won't feel all too mild with wind and rain. Beyond that, you do see the, there's a few ensemble members going to around 15, 16, potentially, uh, degrees, and in the sun, localised spots, maybe 17 or 18 degrees. But then again, other ensemble members are going only 4 or 5 degrees. Perhaps that's because they're coming off the North Sea, or more of a, a colder continental flow. Very similar pattern, very similar upper airs, but towards the surface, it's a lot colder. So again, uh, even though it does look like uh, on the pressure patterns and the up, uh, upper air it's going to be spring-like, it's not really guaranteed at this stage. And again, in the longer term, some ensemble members are going quite cold and bitterly cold again. So it's not guaranteed to be very warm, um, uh, getting up into those uh, low to mid-teens. Um, but it's looking encouraging for those who want warmer temperatures. And, and, and it does uh, show it quite well on the dew points. As you can see, quite mild dew points, getting up to 10 degrees. And some members, others around minus 5, which is showing a quite cold continental flow. And you can see right now we're going down to minus 10, which is why the air is so dry and it's feeling bitterly cold out there, even though the temperatures on the thermometer uh, by daytime around zero or minus one and getting down to minus five at night over the next day or two uh, it's going to feel bitterly cold because of those very very low dew points which is making the air very very dry and making it feel that much colder but again it does show you the air mass at least at the surface is not guaranteed yet and is still subject to some change so it's interesting. Definitely does look like we could be seeing some spring light temperatures, whether they are sustained, whether they are proper sort of mid-teens, is still still uh, got a bit of uncertainty with that. Well, now have a look at the GFS uh, for the precipitation. We'll just run through the next couple of days. I'm going to look at 
the potential for a uh, snow and ice with that. You can see some snow showers in the east at the moment. They are there, um, northeast, uh, and parts of eastern Scotland as well. Um, they are there, but they're nowhere near as widespread because we'll have a look at the uh, radar in a minute. And as you see, through early Saturday, we see those weather fronts approach some significant snow over Northern Ireland, maybe five to ten centimetres, and then widely areas sort of towards the western coast could see some decent snowfall it does look like it might go mild in the southwest and extreme western parts of wales they could be seeing more rain um but it could be some freezing rain around with that and again further inland could be some more freezing rain with that and that's really one to watch and we'll look at the met office warnings for that in a minute you see the weather front does really fizzle out as soon as it reaches the block of cold air for more weather fronts move through and by end of Sunday that, that weather front finally does break it through with very mild air coming in behind it at least very mild relative to now meaning everything's going to be falling in rain apart from perhaps over some Scottish hills and mountains beyond that again we remain fairly southwesterly with bouts of rain uh, wind and rain coming in if we have a look at the GM model you can see again snow showers in the northeast and then we have that weather front quite significant snow for northern ireland and then again some significant snow for western areas for it does fizzle out uh, quite widely uh, around saturday evening beyond that we've got more weather fronts pushing in again only really snow over scottish hills and mountains and mainly ra rain elsewhere not particularly heavy but again over, overnight sunday into monday is looking like the with the real transition back to average to above average temperatures and again more rain coming in from the southwest uh, on this uh, gm run interesting to the gm has updates on the weather outlook but it's not on weather central that might be an issue with weather central i'll have a look at that uh, for my video again tomorrow see if it is just weather central servers broken a little bit so now i have a look at the icon run see snow showers in the northeast as we move through heavy snow over northern Ireland, that really looks like it's going to get a pastening of snow over the next day or two and then beyond that snow shower snow uh well, fizzling out sort of snow into snow showers for western areas um, and before big heavy rain comes in snow over hi hills uh of scotland perhaps some hills over uh, northern england as well but generally mostly just heavy rain a lot heavier on the icon than it was on the other models interesting to see with that quite widely and by early monday most of the rain is cleared a few showers in uh, western areas we're back to a southwesterly flow with bouts of heavy rain moving up from the southwest with wind uh, as well so back to typical westerly fashion by the end of uh, by the start uh, or the end of this weekend and start of next week back to those uh, classic westerly winds if we now have a look at the Met Office snow and ice warnings. You can see snow and ice warning for snow showers in the northeast. Again, don't look like too, too much, uh, too too significant with that. Most areas within this have already seen quite a lot of snow, so it's really only going to be maybe another centimetre or two, so it should cause too much disruption. On Saturday, you see a lot more snow and ice warnings. Again, most of these are probably um, quite. Uh, preemptive and precautionary um especially this ice warning is t the potential for freezing rain uh, as those weather fronts move in uh, where upper airs over uh, undercut the mild uh, the colder air um it, we could be quite mild at upper airs but still very cold at the surface potentially giving some freezing rain and then again we got snow and ice warnings you see for northern ireland um Potential for uh, 5 to 10 centimetres with 1 to 4 centimetres wide and over 20 centimetres potentially. And you can see it's getting on towards amber, amber warning. So uh, it's interesting. Could be an amber warning um, enforced tomorrow potentially. Again, um, it's not guaranteed, but getting closer to potential for an amber warning with that. Definitely does look like my radar there's potential for an amber warning there. It just really depends on how the weather front progresses and whether any warm air undercuts it. On Sunday, again, wind warning for those uh, westerly winds coming back in, and then still an ice warning for eastern areas, mainly for the precautionary threat of freezing rain. Um, uh, and again, yeah, again, it could be fairly significant, but as you can see, it's very it's high impact, quite unlikely at this stage. So it'd be, uh, it'd be interesting to see if that does come off. It does come off, it will be quite dangerous. And if it, it if the increased likelihood does of it does come um I suspect the Met Office will be very swift to issue an amber warning if they do see significant ice to falling. So at the moment, it's really precautionary, but it will probably be updated near the time uh, if it does. Uh, if it does look like it's going to be uh, quite icy out there. Finally, we'll have a look at the weatherchannel.com for the latest radar. Unfortunately, it does refresh every time I go back to the page. So if we have a look at the latest radar, 
it's mainly dry for most of the UK. Uh, you've got those snow showers in northern e northern eastern areas. Again, a, little, a few heavier bands in there, but it's mainly hitting areas that have already seen quite a lot of snow, so it's not too unusual for these regions seeing these snow showers. Elsewhere, if you snow flurries further northwards, very dry in the south, and clear skies as well, so and very cold overnight frost. Uh, potential for me minus five, minus six degrees, and then you see from the southwest of Ireland, you weather for the weather fronts coming in, and you can see already mild temperatures in the southern parts of Ireland and further westwards uh, as it's starting to fall as rain and perhaps snow further inland, but mainly rain towards the coast and the southern areas. And as it bumps into the colder area of Northern Ireland, it will slow down and produce quite a lot of snow with that. So yes, uh, it will be interesting to see how that progresses tomorrow. Some areas in the west could see no snow tomorrow, or could see more more snow than forecast, just depending on how progressive the weather front is. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video tomorrow.